Hey guys, I'm Doug. And I'm Brooke. And today we're gonna talk about how to fuel your body during really endurance-based events. Anything over an hour, right Brooke? Anything over an hour. And we're gonna talk a little bit too about high intensity training because you need fuel for that as well. Recently, when I was riding bikes with a couple of my buddies on the West Coast, uh, I got about two hours into my ride and I started to see stars. And I was like, oh my God, I think I'm gonna pass out. And then I realized that I hadn't eaten anything in two hours. And so I started crushing gels and drinking water and then I felt sick. Yeah. And I still finished the two and a half hour ride. Like I'm not saying I was fast at the beginning of the ride, but the last 30 minutes, they were a suck fest. What goes into fueling during those kinds of efforts? The main thing I would recommend is to be prepared just as much for those times you're training, not just a competition. And the training should also be something that you're using it as a test run to figure this out. So we're gonna give general guidelines of recommended amounts of carbohydrates and ideas for varying the sources of carbohydrate. But this depends a lot on the individual. There is no magic plan of what works. It's really just gonna be practicing, especially what you can tolerate GI-wise. I didn't realize the amount of carbs that you need to take in during physical activity. Do you wanna go over kind of like the loose guidelines on that? Yeah, so I'm gonna start with high intensity training. So with high intensity training, 30 to 60 minutes, some people recommend a small amount of carbs. This could be simply sipping on a little bit of a sports drink. I honestly don't think it's necessary unless you're working out over 60 minutes. So from 60 to 90 minutes when you're doing high intensity interval training, uh, which is a lot of the soft leap programs really. Uh, but those are work capacity moments too. So I mean, I, yes, it's good to consume that, but I mean, like you said, I think simple carb intake is, is all you need, like a sports drink, like endure, yeah. which I guess the difference between like our sports drink and Gatorade is what that like ours is made from pea starch yes and gatorade is straight sugar it's like sucralose or something yeah. right yeah so if you are working out between 60 to 90 minutes at a high intensity interval you want about 30 grams of carbohydrate per hour which is a lot how much how many grams of carbohydrates in a piece of bread it depends on the bread but around 12 grams so every hour you can eat three slices of bread while you're in an endurance event or there's like 23 grams of carbs in like a in a gel type package. So you can have what, like two gels an hour? Yeah, but here's another huge thing. You shouldn't be using one carbohydrate fuel source. It's better to vary them. When you're describing this upset stomach you had from just slamming nothing but gels, that's a real thing. A lot of endurance people do peanut butter and jelly sandwich or fig bars, and then they'll also do gels, some type of carbohydrate drink. Have a have an array of, of stuff. Stinger waffles are the jam. Those are really good. The mini waffles, oh, so good. Other things that you alerted me to that I was unaware of is the longer you work out, the greater your hourly carb need becomes. Yes, this is true. If you're doing endurance activity for two to three hours, the general guideline is 60 gram of carbohydrate per hour. That's a lot more. Now I'm actually having to eat a, just a shit ton. I mean, that's three gels an hour now just to maintain my baseline. Um, I wouldn't recommend that as a fueling plan. I would have a good carbohydrate sports drink of some kind and then some food, but absolutely that's gonna not feel great for that to all be physically food. Cause a lot of this depends on the volume that you're putting into your stomach. And that's why I recommend playing with this, this plan of what works for you while you're training and hopefully working up to whatever the big race is. So like, it's also important though, you know what's in those bottles. So like if you have an electrolyte mix in one bottle and water in another bottle oh, yeah. and you're eating food, you kind of need to know what you're consuming so that you don't crash, right? Yeah, I would absolutely be mindful of that and try to avoid if you can just a big binge every hour. So even though the recommendation in this case is 60 grams per hour, don't try and consume all 60 grams. Try and space that out within that hour. How do we time that? I mean, do we just literally set an alarm on our watch every 15 minutes? I know a lot of people that do that. Um, I think it's honestly the easiest thing to do, especially if it's an endurance event. And then what that looks like timing wise is gonna depend on you. You might wanna do it in 15 minute intervals. You might wanna do it in 20, 30. You just kind of have to see what your body can tolerate. And it depends on the what's in the fuel sources you chose. Similarly with hydration, right? Like we need to be reminding ourselves to keep the mouth wet because like once once you fall off the edge, 
it's hard to come back. Yeah. So you want to stay ahead of it for sure, especially in these super long endurance races. So if you're in a race or just training for endurance training, anything over three hours, you're looking at 90 grams of carb per hour as a recommendation. That's high. This is a general guideline and not everyone is going to need this. This is kind of just what they lay out in sports nutrition. But keeping that in mind, you absolutely should go in with a plan as to what that's going to look like. That could be a lot of uh, carbs. When Brooke says you have to have a plan, she's not kidding. You can easily think you have plenty of fuel or plenty of carbs like on you between rest stations or whatever. By the end of a race, by the end of like an effort, like a three hour effort, you find yourself like, well, I stacked four things in my pockets, but I didn't see a rest station for an hour and a half. And I feel like I'm dying right now, but I don't have any food left. You're not coming back from that. So you need to make sure that you're like stacking in what you want. Absolutely. If you really think about 90 grams of carbs an hour, that's like three pieces of pizza. And yep. you got guys like Dean Carnazes that are talking about ordering whole pizzas in the middle of an endurance event and like eating them, like just crushing them while they run. That's crazy. But I mean, if you're already in that big of a deficit for running, it's, I mean, I'm assuming it's not actually bad for you to eat that kind of garbage while you're running, right? No, a lot of the rules don't apply when we talk about elite level athletes because we tell the general American public things like limit your sodium and be careful of sugar. But if you're an athlete, you need things like salt and easily quickly digestible carbs. Okay. So Brooke has approved you eating whole pizzas when you run anything over 50 miles. After talking about crushing pizzas and fueling with carbs, what the fuck does it mean when nerds are talking about glycemic index? Should I care about that? No. A lot of the research is really conflicting. So my recommendation is that you figure out what works for you as far as what your stomach can tolerate and what makes you feel the best as far as energy levels. Some food is going to make you feel heavy and lethargic. Some isn't. Some food's going to make you have an upset stomach that's fine for me to use. So it really just depends on what works for you. If you guys got anything out of this video, or if you didn't get anything out of this video, please click subscribe and ring the bell. And if glycemic index worked for you, make sure you tell Brooke in the comments.